In this episode, we take a look on train transport, monorail, air delivery, boat transport, and tram service. But first, we take a look on how it goes with the tourist attraction, because it takes little time before we see the result. I have now let the time rolling for some time and rearranged the windows. Here is the information windows for this station. And here is the information windows for the station in the town and the bus between them. But we see there is more than 200 passenger waiting for that bus. That means one bus is not enough. The reason why we have this effect is simple. When we open up an area like this, passengers from the whole country start to descend on this new area. And we have a delay between we open the passenger service and the actually passenger show up because they should move through the whole system. That is the reason why we now see the effect that the capacity are too little. So this line need one more bus and after that we should move on with the next topics. All right, train. If we take up this map again, you can see the train line here. I have built a separate train system. The reason is train are very good to handle big quantity of passenger. So if you have lot of passenger, for example, between towns, or heavy industry. Buses maybe not are an alternative for you. So train is one of the alternative. So why I now build a separate train system? We have the older sleeper and lower speed here. They handle the cargo. And here the high speed for passenger service. And the reason you find here, if we sort this by bonus, we see that the speed bonus for passenger is quite high. That is the reason why I build a high speed train network. I simply make more money by transporting passenger faster, but that bonus are not applied to all type of cargo. The line between the station is simple, at least when they come to passenger service between the national station, like this one. But you can transporting passenger to heavy industry. And that is this line's job. And we can see we have a piece of dual track and after that single track. And here we have a station with two platform, one train sitting and loading up. So the train here operated after the same type of schedule I show for the bus. And here is the reason why I use train. If you click on chart, production and boost, down here you see passenger. This is the information about the passenger service to the nearby town. This is the rest. And down here we have a coal mine. And we're doing the same there. 
you see nearly 1,000 passengers each month. So here is buses not an alternative. Here I choose train. So train is a good alternative for transporting to heavy industry and between towns. But you need to supply the train station with other transporting mode, for example, buses. Here we have quite a lot of traffic. So here I build a lot of dual track. But in our part, there you have less traffic. Operating dual line can be expensive, but uh, operating single line with pieces of strategically placed dual track can be very lucrative. So here we have a line running between these two towns and the train simply meets on the middle with a piece of dual track. So that is one way to keep the cost down if one train is not enough. If you're looking for mobility and flexibility, buses is the answer. If you're looking for big volume, train is the answer. But there is an alternative between these two, and that is tram or light railroad. They have high capacity, are not as fast as train, but are more flexible and can be built inside the town. You can nearly do the same thing you're doing with buses with light railroad. Here is an example that I connect different towns with a national light railroad system. The Trump service is indicated with the same color unfortunately as the railroad. Up in this town I use buses inside the town but have a tram station here but uh, the tram service supply the passenger service to the heavy industry and they operate on the same type of scheduling as the buses I showed previously. And if we take a look outside here, we find a reason a coal mine. And I think there was around 1000 people or something like that here. Yes. Here is an example inside the town. As you can see, Trump can operate on city street, but unfortunately only in one direction. And here I have so much traffic, so I remove the buses and replace them with Trump service. The buses you see operating at the moment are actually driving to the neighboring town down here. And the reason why I was forced to introduce light railroad in this town is this industry. The pharmacy, which have a lot of passenger to move around. So if you look for something relatively flexible, but with higher capacity than buses, Trump service is the answer for you. We should take a look on this thing, an experimental vehicle called monorail. Yes, it is not fully developed yet, but monorail are interesting. It have higher speed than Trump service. So they go in 160 km per hour instead of 19. And they have 
quite close the same capacity per vehicle as the tram service. But because of the higher speed, the overall capacity is higher. And you can build them inside town because you can build a race monorail which go above the street. However, if we take a look on the station this and this, here we see we have mail service. That is because we have a mail station down at the road. But a station like this, which don't have any other service than monorail, have no mail service. And if we now take a look on the station for the monorail, we have here, you can see there is no mail service station. But uh, if we take a look on the depot and build a vehicle, we actually have mail service here, but we cannot utilize it. So I think the developer of this game need to take little time here and develop a station for mail delivery because I think that monorail can be an interesting alternative in the future for tram service in towns. But if you want to connect to town with monorail, monorail is a good alternative because of the speed and you see I building a test track here and one vehicle are enough to operate this heavy line. So if you look for passenger service which are nearly as flexible as trump service but have higher speed and high capacity, monorail service can be an interesting alternative. I have now moved from this town to this town and we should take a look on air service. Air service have one big advantage. It is quite flexible. The only thing you need is an airport and the aircraft. No road, no rail track or any other infrastructure and air service operating over land and over sea. So no bridges either or a harbor to simply move the cargo or passenger to other places. However, the big drawbacks is it costs a lot of money to operate it air service. But the capacity at the, this time in the game, you see down here, 1989, is very high. It is actually the most efficient way to move very big quantity of passenger. You can see 552 passenger at a time in each aircraft and they move with 970 km per hour. It outperforms tram, monorail, railroad. There is no more efficient way to move very big quantity of passenger over longer distance. And that are also the main weakness because if you don't have that high volume of passenger, you cannot make profit out of air delivering. But if you have high volume of passenger, air service can be an interesting alternative. There is however one trick I think you should learn when it comes to airways. This is a high performance airport. We have two runways and taxiway connecting the different part. Here we have the hangar or depot as they also call it in the game. Here they offload, unload 
and we have the necessary building for passenger and mail service. So here, runway for incoming aircraft, no entering sign with direct the traffic in this direction. So in and out. That are how you build a high performance airport. So utilize the signaling system you have in the airport, which are no entering sign. There is no other signal system for airport. I have moved from this town up to this harbor now, because we should take a look on boat transport. You can operate boat in the same way as you are operating the line between the cities. But this is a line operating between this harbor and the platform outside here. But if you operate boat in the same way as you operate buses, trains and trams in this situation when they supply industry and tourist attraction. The boat transport will be very expensive. So the schedule is different for boat. So they sit in the harbor in this case, loading up 100% drive out or sail out to the platform, take whatever they can and go back to the harbor and load again. So there is a risk that the platform will be crowded. But with so few platform, I simply handle that problem manually, if it actually occur. To get passenger service to work in the harbor, you need a special pier for passenger service. So in this harbor I handle a lot of incoming crude oil through this pier and passenger out to the platform from this pier. So incoming cargo, crude oil and mail and outgoing passenger here. That was everything I have to show you. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. In the next episode we finish off this series about Symmetrans and make a short summary of the series. Thank you for your time.